Welcome back. This is lesson 12 of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session 8. And in this lesson, we will use the model we trained previously. So in the previous lesson, we trained our final model. We trained it on the bigger images. The images we used there were 299 by 299. So we used um, a neural network. So these are the parameters, actually. So the learning rate was 0 0.005. Then size of the inner layer was 100, and dropout rate was 20%. And then on top of that, we added some augmentations. So we trained this model. The model achieved 90% accuracy on validation. It was actually saved here as a checkpoint. So what we want to do in this video is take this model that we trained previously and use it for evaluating it on training data set. And then second, we want to see how to actually use this model for making predictions. So let's do that. And Actually, now I restarted the notebook, starting from scratch. You see, if I just execute this, it's input one. We can imagine that this model was trained some time ago. Now we want to load it. So we first import TensorFlow STF. Then we import Keras from Keras. So later, we will need other things. But for now, that's enough. We just want to load the model. For that, we use a function that gives in Keras models load model. So this is the model name that we want to load. So this is our model. And now we want to read the test data set. We should read it in the same way as we read the validation data set. So here, the size that we want to have is 299 by 299. And we name it test. And for that, we actually need to import a couple of things. So from TensorFlow Keras preprocessing image, we need to import image data generator. And then from Keras applications uh, exception, we need to import the preprocessing function. I think that's enough. We don't need anything else. Let's see if I forgot anything. Okay, so we have almost 400 images belonging to 10 classes. So we loaded the data. Now what we need to do is we can evaluate it. So in the model, there is a function called evaluate. That's very handy. So what we can just provide is this test data set. All we need to do is just run it. I'm not sure what the first number is. Maybe we can see in the documentation, but the second number is actually the accuracy on the test data set. Let me see what it returns. So it returns the loss value and metric. So the loss is... Um, Categorical cross entropy. It's a bit technical, it's not interesting for us, but uh, accuracy is more interesting. So, and we see that accuracy on the testing data is 90%, so, which is you know, almost the same as we had for validation. So, it means our model did not overfit. So, it means that we trained a good model. I'm just curious to see. Uh, remember, we had another model, and I said I don't have enough trust in this model. I'm just curious to see how well it performs. So, I Actually, I'm expecting this model to overfit, and I'm just curious to see if it will overfit or not. So let's quickly check that. Hmm, actually not, it did not overfit. I mean, this was an example of sort of data snooping. So I was not supposed to do that. I was just curious. It's good to know that it didn't overfit, but you know, many things could have happened. So we should go with that model. And it, anyways, it's slightly better. Uh, let me just uh, load it one more time. So what I want to do is now apply this model to an image. So let's say we have an image. It's a clothing data set. Let's get something from test. I'll use pens. So this is this image. So we can see it. Um, I forgot to import another thing. So we have this load image, remember? And this is something we use for loading images. This is how it looks like. So this is an image of pens, uh, probably jeans or something like that. So target size for us is 299 by 299. That will be our image. Yeah, so now we need to turn this image into an NumPy array. And remember that this is how we do this. Oh, I didn't import NumPy. So I just do numpy array and then put it. And yeah, I'll call it lowercase x. And then the capital case would be a batch of images with just one. Now 
let's check the shape. So the shape of this is one. There is one image, 299 by 299. This is our dimensionality, and then we have three channels. So this is how our X looks like. Now we need to pre-process it. So this is how it looks like after pre-processing it. So let's write it back to X. And actually that's it. So now we can use our model to make a prediction. And this is how our prediction looks like. So let me just write it to an array and we can look at the first row of the array. So this is the prediction. Now we need to get the classes. Let me just scroll up and find them. These are the classes that we have. So I'll slightly edit it. Just quickly open my Visual Studio. And what I want to do is I want to turn this into a list. So I removed all these indices, and this is a list. And the reason for that is um, it doesn't make sense to have this mapping from the zero element to zero, for, from the th first element to one, to, to one, and so on. It's already sequential. So I'll have our classes. So these are our classes. And now what we need to do is we need to join the classes with the predictions. And for that, we use zip, and let's turn it into a dictionary. And here, what we have fence is the biggest score. Then the second biggest is shorts, which makes sense because they they, they are similar. Um, yeah, you, you see that here that we have we don't have probabilities. We actually have a score that is up to ten. So this is the logits we were talking about. These are the raw predictions. We can of course turn them into probabilities, but we can just treat them as relative likelihood of belonging to this class. So if we see a large number here, we just know that this has more likelihood of belonging to the fence class than to short class. But of course, if we need probabilities, we can apply softmax. I will not do it here, but it's not that difficult to do. So that's it, what I wanted to talk about in this lesson. So this is how we use the model. This is how we evaluate the model, and this is how we get predictions. And also this is how we post-process predictions to get the classes. So our model predicted correctly that um, we have pens on this image. Yeah, now we can use this model for our original idea. So we wanted to classify different images into different categories. So now we can do that. Yeah, that's all. In the next lesson, we will summarize everything we learned in this uh, session, which was quite a lot. And yeah, so see you soon.